Hey guys, what's up? Justine here and welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me today. And today I'm going to talk about something that I've grown to know very well and basically the only topic that I have to talk about at the moment and that is ER nursing. I know I'm wearing OR scrubs, but these are just so comfy that I just can't help myself. Oop, what's in my pocket? A blood sticker. Hmm, whose bloods did I forget to do three weeks ago? I don't know, I'm hoping they were canceled. Okay, moving on. <laughs> that went through the washer, by the way. That's weird, that, anyway. So before going any further, I just wanted to thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video. I've done videos with them in the past. I love working with them. And if you guys don't know what Skillshare is, which I'm pretty sure that you do, it's basically an online learning community that offers a membership with meaning. With so much to explore and projects to create, Skillshare encourages you to accomplish real growth and learning. They offer classes designed for real life so you can keep moving your creative journey forward without putting your real life on hold. Their classes are information filled and convenient for busy lives that most of us lead. Skillshare's goal in 2020 is to help you create more goals, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity. There are so many different classes varying from a bunch of different topics that are sure to fit your lifestyle and your passions. A few of those topics include animation, film and video, fine arts, creative writing, illustration, music, photography, and so many more. Their subscription is also around $10 a month, which makes it super affordable for everyone. While I was taking my little YouTube break for the past few months, I made sure to watch Skillshare videos pretty often to keep my learning going. And I actually recently watched a really, really interesting class called, I don't wanna mess up the words, so I'm gonna read it here for you guys. It was called Personal and Lifestyle Branding, Building Your Story. And it's a Skillshare original. It was so interesting. It was about 30 minutes long, I would say, which is super easy to fit in any busy schedule. And it really helped me get back into the swing of things and teach me how to work on my branding for my YouTube and my Instagram and all that. So I definitely recommend you guys check them out. I would highly, highly recommend them to anyone. If you guys are interested in trying out Skillshare, I'll have a link down below for you guys. And the first 500 of you can get two months free of premium Skillshare subscription. If you don't like it for whatever reason, there's no obligation. You can cancel anytime. At least try it out. I totally recommend it. You guys will love it. There's so many classes for everyone and it's just a really, really awesome learning platform. I have a couple tips here on if you guys are looking to work in the ER but you're scared like I was before um, and honestly there's nothing to be scared about. It's very similar to other places that you would work. It's just the beat of it is a little bit different and it's something to get used to. So I thought I would share some tips with you guys if you're looking to go work in the ER but you're hesitant. Do not be, I have all the tips for you. I guess it's not tips, it's more like what you should know before you start working there. So the first thing you should know is that honestly, I work nights, if you guys don't know, I work from midnight to 8 a.m. And you never know what you're walking into. You might look at the doctor app on your phone and see that your ER is 75% full or 130% full. Odds are it's gonna be wrong and it's gonna be the complete opposite. <laughs> um, but you never know what you're walking into. Some nights it's super calm, you have like two, three patients or some nights you might have eight and it's crazy and there's overflow and it's just madness. And you never know what patients you're gonna have because they range from A to Z and it's just always a surprise, which is kind of fun because as opposed to medicine, where if you work three nights in a row, odds are you're gonna have the same patients those three nights or those three shifts, whatever shift you're working. And if they're not so pleasant, you're stuck with them. But this way, patients keep rotating all the time and it's great because you get to be exposed to different diseases and different problems that they may have. And it just keeps things interesting, to be honest. And that is what I really like about it. And that is what I was looking for when I left my job on the medicine unit. Second thing you should know is don't expect to be taking a break every day, although I think this is pretty similar for all nursing units. You never know what your day is going to look like and you never know if you're going to be able to take a break. On night shift, we do get to take a break more often than day shift because I don't want to say there's less things to do, but they're just more it's not that there's more time either. I guess there are less things to do or it's easier to manage your work in order to be able to take a break. Now, sometimes it may only be half an hour. Sometimes it can be an hour. It really depends on the night. Um, I think I kind of already touched on this, but number three is you'll be taking care of all types of patients. Um, one thing that 
I had to start um, looking up and studying was a lot of GI diseases. In medicine, I mean, I had like some cirrhosis, I had some like hepatitis patients and all that, but never any cholecystitis, no um, like kidney stones, never any irritable bowel syndrome, like all these GI patients that I never had to deal with and it's very cool to have to see this, these types of patients and honestly what I love about it is that usually they'll come in the waiting room in the front and now if you guys don't know I work in the back which is like we call it the observation which is where they put patients down in the stretchers I don't work in the front yet because you only get oriented to that after a year and that'll be like in July um, but the front is where they triage the patients and they come into the rooms, they get evaluated by the doctors, whatever. And then if they, if the nurse decides that, or the doctor wants to keep them overnight, then they'll bring them back and then we'll take care of them. So a lot of the GI patients, they're waiting in the waiting room, they get seen by the doctor and then, or not even, maybe they don't even get seen by the doctor, but the, see, I don't even know really how it works. The nurse will talk to the doctor about the case and say, okay, I have this patient that's in a lot of pain. Can I give them painkillers? Maybe they'll start an IV, they'll start flus, whatever. So they'll bring them to the back. They already got their pain medication. They already have their IV going. And so basically, yeah, I just need to monitor their pain and like give them anything else that they need. So it's really cool. I love those patients. And often they're not as like acute as like heart attack patients or like GI bleed patients, whatever. They're like pretty stable and often they're t oftentimes they're a lot younger. So those patients, I love. Um, the next thing you should know is that your patients will sometimes rotate out completely. Now this has never happened to me, but I've heard about it happen where you start your shift, say with five patients and throughout your day, this is more like on day shift because that's when you get more rotation because they go up to the floor and they get discharged, but your five patients might rotate out completely once or twice, depending on the flow of things, depending on how much room they have upstairs or if they get discharged or things like that. So that is one thing to expect. You will might have like 10 patients in one shift even though you only have five beds. <laughs> Another thing that you should know is that admissions will not stop coming in just because you're busy. The one of the worst feelings in the world is when you're already drowning and you see an ambulance come by and you see that they're laying them down in one of your beds and you're just like, oh my God, I have so much to do. Just to give you guys a little like how it works, basically you have the front, like I was saying with the waiting room, the triage and those nurses take care of the patients over there and then in the back that's where we take I take care of the patients um, and when they come in by ambulance they get triaged and then they go right into a bed unless it's someone that called an ambulance for a useless reason they can go away in the waiting room which very rarely happens but usually they'll put them in a bed triage nurse comes to give you a report and say it's like someone that comes in with chest pain at least where I work you got to go do bloods you got to go put in an IV put them on a cardiac monitor do all this stuff put them in their gown you know get them set uh, if it's someone that's there with a fever, you gotta go do bloods again, put an IV, send them for chest x-ray, all this stuff. So there's all this stuff that needs to be done. And when you're drowning, you just don't want to have to do all that stuff. Um, sometimes if it's a, like an elderly patient that fell or something, you just go evaluate them and then wait for the doctor to see them and then you'll have things to do. I'm telling you, the worst feeling is when you're drowning and you see that ambulance come in and you're just praying they bring it to the other side and they don't and you're like, oh my god, I cannot do this right now. But it happens very often. Another thing that I did not know before I started working working uh, in this particular ER is that you might have to work with an LPN. Now I know this is pretty standard everywhere, especially in the States, but where I used to work before on my medical floor, we didn't have LPNs. And sure, I learned about, you know, their um, scope of practice in school, but I never actually concretely worked with one. And it's very different from working by yourself. It can be awesome if you vibe well and you, share tasks and you know you work as a team i love the lpns i work with they're awesome but it took me some getting used to i was first of all i was never i had never worked with an lpn before i was never oriented to work with an lpn so i kind of had to learn things on my own which is not the way that i recommend it if you are getting trained i read if you never worked with an lpn before on any floor this is i recommend you ask to specifically be trained to work with the LPN because it can be not dangerous, but you need to know what they do and what you do during your shift. So for instance, who does the notes? Who does the initial rounds? Who gives the medication? Like all this stuff. And this is something that you can discuss with her or him and everyone works differently. But that was one of the big things I had never worked in the LPN before. And it was definitely, it definitely took some getting used to. And yeah, so I definitely recommend that you um, asked to be trained specifically to know what your job is, what her job is, and how to work well together. 
The last thing is just like any other job, don't be scared. You'll develop a routine eventually. It can be really scary at first, especially when it's a whole new environment. You're learning where the stock room is. You're learning how to use your online programs. You're learning, you know, how how to do what and when. But you'll develop a routine eventually. I would say I developed a routine within like three weeks to a month and I've kind of just stuck to that and it, it's worked really well for me but everyone works differently I like to have my own report sheet that I take my notes on um, I have it on Etsy available it's always linked down below for you guys but some people like just printing blank pages of paper or the papers that come out from the computer with the patient information already on them everyone works differently everyone does their rounds differently everyone you know go through their shifts differently and so it's definitely something that will develop personally another thing i want to mention is if you don't want to go to er because you're just scared of having to work in trauma or in triage don't worry at least where i work you have to do a whole year in the observation which is like in the back of the er where there's all the stretchers and um then after that you'll be trained in the rooms in the front which is where patients are examined where you assess patients um and things like that and then you'll be oriented to trauma and then triage last now it is different on night shift because say i usually where i work there's three people in the back where i work in the front, there's two nurses and then the charge nurse. One nurse is assigned to triage, one nurse is assigned to trauma, and then the charge nurse kind of does a little bit of everything, takes through her reports. But you have to do the rooms as well, and then when both of them are on break and you're the only one in front, you're covering trauma and you're covering triage. You don't only do whatever you're assigned to. Whereas on days, if you're assigned to the rooms, most likely you'll only be doing the rooms and maybe if you've been trained you'll cover trauma obviously on nights if you have to do those you'll be oriented to them but you'll probably be oriented to them earlier than on days that's kind of what i meant so don't be scared you'll have plenty of time to get used to the beat and then also when you're working in the back you can ask questions sometimes you can go help in trauma just kind of see how it works you can go help in the front just to kind of get a feel for how it works and honestly your supervisors or your partners won't put you somewhere you're not comfortable with and if you don't feel comfortable yet and you need more training, definitely ask for it because it is a safety um, concern and it's your, I, I don't want to say your mental health, but it kind of is because if you're freaking out about having to go to work every day, that's not good. So just don't worry. Everything is adapted. You're not the first one to go through it. I survived. If I can survive, you can survive. So don't worry. I would definitely, I recommend ER to anyone who is tired of working where they're working if you're tired of medicine if you're tired of surgery whatever you get everything in er you get kids you get elderly people you get younger people you get surgery cases you get medical cases you get acute patients you get stable but you get everything and so it's really nice to have that mix so that you're never bored you're literally never bored because every night is something different and you never know what you're gonna come into but you get used to the same patients you get used to having to deal with cardiac patients you get used to having to deal with gi patients kids all that you get used to it but yet it's still interesting because it's always different types of cases so yes 100 percent, i would recommend er to anyone see if your hospital can allow like a trial run where you can go and just try it out for a day or two follow a nurse around see if you like it and then maybe ask to take up some shifts down there if you can um while keeping your position upstairs and then if you like it enough then you can switch eventually so those are my what you should know about er nursing i hope you guys enjoyed um and i will see you guys in my next video bye guys